Hi, my name is Phil. I'd like to talk about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the assessment by our former ambassador to the EU, Sir Ivan Rogers, of Boris Johnson's stated aims for a Brexit deal with the EU. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So that Boris Johnson is not going to get the deal that he thinks he's proposing seems obvious enough. The EU have said they're not going to. Uh, oddly enough, it even seems to be something that both sides of the debate agree upon, but for different reasons. But Sir Ivan Rogers, one of the few Britons who actually understands how the EU and international trade negotiations worked, having worked in them, has said that it would be little better for the economy than a no-deal Brexit anyway. It's always worth listening to Rogers if you get the chance. He's not only very knowledgeable about the subject, which puts him in a small minority in the UK, but makes extremely clear points that puts things in context for everyone to be able to understand. And in his recent speech, he noted that although people in the UK seem happy to disparage the EU, that the EU is extremely good at negotiating and that they have demonstrated this over the past few years. And it's true. You know, think about what Boris Johnson had to give in order to get his withdrawal agreement. Now, ask most people and they will just say if they know anything at all. Oh, well, you know, he moved the customs border from inside Ireland to between Ireland and Great Britain. Yeah, he did that. But there were a number of other things as well. Most surprising, even to me, was that he also gave up our share of the money in the European Central Bank. That £7 billion that Boris Johnson just gave away. The original settlement meant that we would have kept that because that was our stake. And uh, But no, Boris Johnson, they, the EU went to him, oh, you want this withdrawal agreement? You're running out of time here, Boris. Um, you've moved the border. Yeah, that's great. That's grand. Uh, there's a few other little wriggles. Tell you what, it'll save time. You know, this £7 billion quid you've got in our bank, it'll just save time if we get to keep it. To which Boris Johnson essentially went, yeah, all right then. Not his money, he doesn't care. And when you try and point out how easily the EU ran rings around us over the past few years, Brexit supporters just point to the fact that the meetings, oh, it's because the meetings took place in Brussels. They're gonna, some of them are gonna take place in London now. Now you'll see, now you'll see some business. I don't even know where to go with that. Of course, the London talks set for this month have been cancelled now, so that scuppers that idea anyway. There may be more later on. But we run out of time. Remember, we're heading towards June. June is the time when Boris Johnson says, if I'm not getting my deal, we're closing talks then. You know, so Ivan Rogers also talks about the fact that Boris, Boris Johnson believes that the EU will cave in and give us our deal if only we stand firm and look like we're prepared to walk away without a deal. Now, I'm going to pick that topic up in the next video because it's, it's a thing on its own. But for now, I will just say that that assumes Boris Johnson wants a deal. I am not convinced at all. But he also said something interesting about those playing in the financial market. So this is a sector that's going to be really badly hit. And unlike a lot of our other industries that are also, well, every industry is going to be badly hit. The financial sector is one where there's an awful lot of wealthy people there uh, who have an awful lot of influence over government policy. However, Roger said that, that these people are underestimating the risk of a no deal. Now, to me, that seems a little bit weird because I look at the situation entirely politically, um, you know, and I'm seeing a no deal as not just likely, but very likely indeed. I've mentioned before that there are a lot of people, well-informed people as well, that do not believe that Boris Johnson will take us out without a deal. But as I've noted before, this seems to be based on the assumption that a no deal is so insanely bad for everything that no government will do it. Well, I have news for them. We have in place a government of mad dogs. I'm not saying a no deal is certain. Once people see that our bluff, if you can call it that, is not going to work, there may well be enough pressure brought to bear to steer us away, even if there are members of the government who want a no deal, they cannot exist in a vacuum as much as they would wish to try. Yes, Johnson's majority makes Parliament look pretty tame at the moment, but that same Parliament has not been tested in the crucible of the Brexit abyss. If there's a lot of people at the moment, and I do not know where the spread is, if there are a lot of people who are looking at the situation and going, 
yeah, we don't really want a no deal, but we're not going to get a no deal because we just need to prove that we're prepared to leave without a deal and the EU will cave. They're just sticking to that line and they believe it. Well, we'll see what happens when that's shown not to be true. Um, but if you think that just because of that, Johnson's not going to take us out without a deal, that is to place your hopes on backbench MPs to stand up and be counted in opposing it. Finally, Rogers made the point that the deal that Boris Johnson is after has been shown to be little better than no deal by economists anyway. And that's really the final kick in the teeth, isn't it? So let's say you are of the view uh, that this already debunked bluff will work after all. Uh, the economic modelling shows that it's the worst possible deal for the UK. Only a no deal would be worse because a no deal is not a deal. So out of all the possible deals you can try and arrange with the EU, the one that Boris Johnson is after is the worst that has been modelled. So it's the worst one that's been put forward. Um, now, part of this can be explained by, let's consider a few trading realities, because it is actually quite easy to understand some of the reasons for this. So for all the people saying that we can just replace our trade with Europe with other countries overseas, uh, it flies in the face of how trade actually really works. Everyone trades the most, everyone in the world, trades the most with their most immediate neighbours. This isn't just politics. If it, were poli if it were a political decision, then you wouldn't see this replicated all the way across the world. Literally, every country on earth trades the most with those immediately around it. it isn't politics, it's just sensible, practical geography. It is much quicker and easier to trade with your neighbours. You can get stuff more quickly, you easier to communicate, you know, they're culturally much more similar. Um, in the event of Johnson's deal, if we refuse to accept that it's not happening, so let's say we get this deal, we would have the greatest trade friction in Europe. The deal, remember, does not mean no checks at the border. It means getting rid of quite a lot of tariffs and quotas, not all of them, but it still means checks at the border on everything, slowing everything down. Now, that means that let's say you're a European company outside of the UK and you want to buy something. You want to buy a product from the UK. There's a UK business that supplies just what you want. Fantastic. You will experience greater costs and delays in getting that product than if you buy them elsewhere, including non-EU countries in Europe. So our deal is worse than the deal that non-EU countries have with the EU in Europe. And what that means is that you are much more likely then to take your business elsewhere. The only way that UK company will still make that sale is if what they are making is either so unique or such good quality or so cheap that it can still compete. So because that business in Europe will go, well, it's going to cost more, and there's going to be greater delays and that's going to hit my profits, but I can't really get it elsewhere. That is the only way you're going to get that sale. Uh, otherwise, you're going to lose business. So a lot of businesses are going to lose those sales. Our trade depends upon frictionless trade. We've, we've built this up over two generations. Johnson's proposals do not give us that. This is why the European project has been copied all over the world. When people keep saying, oh, we should leave the EU, we, we were all right before we joined. I keep saying, well, one, no, we weren't. That's why we joined. But two, the world is not as it was. You don't do trade agreements with individual countries very easily these days because other countries are in trading blocks of their own. So let's say you're trying to do a trade deal with, with someone. Let's say we're trying to do a trade deal with the US, which we are. And let's say we're not going to just give in to everything the US wants. So we're going to try and at, negotiate something. And let's say the US, in theory, is, is open to agreeing to that. But then let's say Canada, which is a much bigger trading partner for the United States, says, hang on a minute, no, because that's going to hurt our markets. We don't want you giving the UK that. Then the US will have to defer to their largest trading partner or their larger trading partner and, and go, sorry, UK, we can't give you that. Canada doesn't want us to. And we're going to find that all across the world. You know, the, no country is going to give us anything that harms the markets of their closer trading partners. Our closest trading partners are in the EU. So that means the only way we're going to get out of this is a deal with the EU. And 
Johnson's deal creates barriers, frictions that we need to actually, I would say remove, but they've already been removed, maintain that removal. So anyway, that is what it is from someone who understands the EU and international trade agreements, not some chancer they stuck on question time. So I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.